<laughs> every time I give, I give the, when I give the pre keynote presentation, so I feel very, very nervous because of the language. Uh, I wish everyone could speak Japanese. <laughs> But I can help it, so the, the, it's so la vie, so that I have to speak in English. So, let's start. So, what? let's start. Uh, this is my first visit to the UK in the last four or five years. And then the last time I visited in UK, so it was for the relatively smaller meetups. So, meet up. so the, this is my first conference keynote in, in UK and of course in Bath. So the, so welcome to the Bath Ruby conference. So the Bath is great city <laughs> and then this is uh, known to be a old Roman bath. And then we you may not know that we Japanese love bath. So <laughs> Because so that we take bath every day instead of taking shower, <laughs> so that so that means the bath is nice. <laughs> uh, this is very nice city, so we are nice. <laughs> Bin Swan. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I like uh, walking in the in the European city. So, it, it, is it okay we consider UK as a part of Europe? <laughs> okay, the European cities that's great. And then, so that I really appreciate the the, the old cities and the tradition, and then, yeah, the friendly community in here in UK and Bath. So, okay. Last month, we celebrated the 25th anniversary of Ruby. Uh, it was so we had a, the, some kind of a celebration party in Tokyo, and then we had uh, more than 500 people attended. So it was quite uh, exciting, nice, and friendly uh, event. And then, uh, yeah, Koichi there somewhere in, in the audience uh, is is one of the organizers, and uh, I really appreciate the, the people in, in back in Tokyo, so organized that kind of the nice uh, event. And then at the, at the same time, we uh, organized uh, some kind of the virtual event on Twitter and, and the internet, so that we collected a message from uh, Ruby users all over the world to celebrate the 25th uh, anniversary of the language, so that so many people, uh, I, I didn't count, but uh, more than 1,000, probably 3,000 people uh, posted so the, the, appreci the message of appreciation or excitement or whatever uh, positive message toward the, the Ruby language. So I really appreciate that. And then this is amazing. So many people love the language and uh, you know the, the improve their lives and then uh, you know it was started by my hobby project so that it it's it was not supposed to be <laughs> like this so i was so ama amazed so by the way how you define the birthday of programming language <laughs> uh, in Wikipedia, it says the, the first appeared date. For example, for, for Ruby, the first release of Ruby was version 0 0.95, that released in the nine, uh, December 21st, 1995. Uh, so in, in Wikipedia, we, it says the first appeared in 1995. So it is 23 years ago. So uh, because I define the, the birthday of the language in different way. So because, so I put it, the first Ruby source code into the, in, on, onto the internet on the December 95, but so for me, so the, the language is working 
in, in my pocket. <laughs> So, so the, the first release date is not the birthday from my point of view. So the, it, it leads us to the, the very uh, philosophical question, uh, the how software are born. So the softwares do, do not have any physical entity or it's, it's kind of like a conceptual existence. So the, it's the, the, the birthday should be the date when Ruby became Ruby. <laughs> uh, kind of philosophical question. <laughs> so Ruby's birthday is the date when the concept Ruby, the language, was born. The concept? <laughs> so I believe the concept is formed by the name Ruby. Uh, the in, in programming, naming matters. So we recognize the world by names. So the names directly relate to the concept. So hence the date I named Ruby is the birthday of Ruby, which is uh, February 24th, 1993. This is the day I named Ruby. A ruby. <laughs> the, uh, few a week before that, before this date, so I talked with my colleague to create about the creating new programming language because uh, creating programming uh, my own programming language is my high school dream. I got the dream when I was 17. So that back then I was a basic hobby programmer. So, but the, the basic was uh, only language I knew at the moment. But uh, I was kind of like frustrated by the language back then. So the basic was pretty poor programming language. Especially uh, the, the dialect I, of basic I used was pretty much limited uh, because so the, every variable could only have one letter. That means we could have 26 global variables. No local variables, no stock, no recursion, no function definition. So it was very, very limited uh, environment. So I was frustrated. But uh, as a young boy, I didn't know what to do about this frustration. But uh, one day, I visited a nearby bookstore, and I got a uh, textbook for the Pascal programming language. Uh, the Pascal is, you may not know, the Pascal was the language pretty much popular in the 80s. <laughs> it's, back then, it was compared to the C programming language. Anyway, so the, the, for me, the, the Pascal language was I, uh, mind breaking. Uh, it has the user defined data structure, it has pointers, it has uh, recursion, it has the, uh, the concept of the local variables. What's this local variable stuff? So, so the, soon after that, I realized there are so many programming languages out there in the world, so that there are Pascal, C, Lisp, Smalltalk, Forlan, Cobol, PL1, with so many of programming languages. And I realized, so the, unlike human language, like a Japanese, Chinese, English, so the programming languages have their inventor, so that someone created programming language by uh, some purpose or intention. So someone designed uh, the programming languages. So the I was I was 17 back then. So the the it it's kind of like a. The idea popped in my mind. So these programming languages are designed by humans. So why not me? Why can't I create my own programming language? That was kind of like crazy idea, but, but uh, that idea got me so 
strongly. So, uh, but uh, back then, it was 80s, the beginning, uh, the, the, the 80s, so the early 80s, so the, we didn't have internet. It is very uh, limited source of uh, source of information, so that I have I had no skill and then no knowledge, and then I couldn't create my own programming language back then. But I I opened up my notebook and write down the program in my dream programming language. Uh, unfortunately, I lost that notebook. That, that's pity. <laughs> anyway, uh, that was my high school dream. Then I got into the, uh, into, I went to the university and I majored in computer science and I graduated from the school. Then I w started working started working as a the professional programmer for two years. Then, uh, 10 years later, 1993, when I was 27, uh, I started uh, programming Ruby in this date, uh, February 24th, 1993. So she has just turned 25. We wanted to name it, we wanted to name it after Joel because so the, I learned a lot from the programming language named Pro, so I wanted to name it after jewels. But uh, most jewel names are so long and complex and hard, hard to type. Uh, diamond, emerald, sapphire, so that they're not really good name for the programming language. So the, the Ruby or Coral uh, candidates were. And then Ruby was shorter. <laughs> And Ruby was more beautiful, and Ruby was more expensive. <laughs> so <coughs> I named it my I, my language Ruby. <coughs> so <coughs> remember, it was '93. It, it was before Google, so we don't have to worry about the Google ability. So now, these days, we have to coin new words to create the, the, you know, the programming language name that is easy to find so that we have more trouble to name our software. But uh, back then, it was quite easy to name it Ruby. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's not that much problem because uh, Google named their language Go. <laughs> How could, could we Google Go <laughs> as a language? I mean, anyway, okay, uh, we named it, 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 uh, it Ruby. Afterwards, we, we found that some, uh, some coincidences, like uh, birthstones. The Pro is a birthstone of June, and Ruby is a birthstone of July. Yeah, quite nice. And font sizes, uh, the, the old font sizes, like, uh, you know, the, the font, as uh, that this small, the, back in the day, the font was this kind of, the, the small stamps. Uh, but these days, font, each font size has names. And uh, five-point font has the name Pro, and 5.5, it was Ruby. So the, yeah, it's sufficient name for the next pro. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it, but it, it was quite an yeah, interesting coincidence. Uh, the next pro, the, the, it was actually, this is our primary goal of the programming language, is in the very early stage of Ruby. As, uh, it should be as useful as Ruby and as strong as Ruby. Uh, I mean, I'm as strong as Pro, I mean. To be honest, we went too far. <laughs> too fat. Too far, I mean. <laughs> uh, present day, we are now next Pro. Actually, it's Pro 6. <laughs> and uh, we haven't heard the Pro that much these days. And uh, in fact, it's next to Python. Or following Python. <laughs> Uh, that, that's the limit of my imagination. So the predicting the future is always hard. The 25 years of Ruby, 
Uh, did I foresee the current popularity? No. <laughs> Of course not. The, I thought, so back then in 90s, we have the many, uh, the hobby programming language created by the individual programmers. So the, the many of them just disappears in the history of the internet. So the, I expected my language, Ruby, would be, would be, you know, disappears. And then a few years later, I lost I would lose, lose the interest in developing the language, so uh, it, it should be, you know, decreased in the, the popularity. And but uh, it didn't happen. So that many people found Ruby, and then they loved the language. They use Ruby in many cases, and then the very popular web application framework uh, came in. Then you know the the web, web scene was dominated by Ruby on Rails and PHP. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, so that I mean that, so that 25 years ago, so it is quite difficult to predict the, the, the current situation. So I was a Unix programmer, uh, mostly using C on variety of CPU platforms, including Spark and Intel, Intel 86. It's hard to predict the future, as I said. Today, I am mostly a Unix programmer, and I'm mostly using C and some Ruby, of course, and on a variety of CPU platforms, including ARM and Intel. That means last 25 years, fundamental platforms have been incredibly stable, so that we still keep using Unix, and we still using Intel. 86 architecture. Uh, we are lucky. Uh, application domain has changed a lot, but uh, the operating systems and the underlying CPU and then the, the system architecture did not, did not change that much. So the web. Back in 93, we, I didn't use web. The web was there. It was invented in around 90, 1990. So that it was there somewhere in the world, but I didn't use that. So the Ruby is not designed to be used for web application because there were no such application there back then. Uh, the cloud was not there. IoT is not there. So the, the operating systems and the languages could handle them. Be, uh, what were unexpected? Uh, web, of course, unexpected. Cloud was unexpected. IoT is unexpected. And the uh, disappearance of Pro is unexpected. The popularity of JavaScript is unexpected. <laughs> uh, the, even though we are going to have the language like TypeScript is unexpected. So the, we, the, our language uh, evolved into less script and more programming. So that uh, Ruby used to be classified as a scripting language. But uh, these days, we are expecting uh, Ruby as a programming language. So that this uh, language these days, like a, a recent popular language like a Swift, Go, or whatever, has static types. So that we have more types, especially static types, and uh, the more scale. So the scalability is the key of the, the current situation 25 years later uh, after Ruby was born. So let's, the, under this uh, situation, so let's predict, try to predict the Ruby after next 25 years. Uh, as I said <laughs> three, in three times, predicting the future is always hard. Uh, difficult to anybody. 
So even the very smart uh, scholars or maybe smart experts would make mistakes. Uh, back in Japan, there's a very in, uh, interesting uh, economist, and she wrote, OK, Japanese economy will crash, that kind of book, every year. <laughs> Yeah, someday she will write. She will write. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, it is okay to be responsible predicting future because everyone everyone would be wrong. Uh, the trend has two keywords. One of it, one of them is the first is the scalability. So the everything is getting bigger. The program size is getting bigger. Uh, team size is getting bigger. Uh, data size is getting bigger. Traffic size is getting bigger. So we have to fight with these sizes. So the, the, the people you started typing to fight with the, this kind of uh, scales, or they may use the JVM to fight with the, the scale. But uh, I believe these are local optimal. Okay, the second keyword of the trend is the smarter companion. I will explain this later. But at last, uh, we are in the age that computers are smart. So that, uh, remember, we are the masters and the computers are servants. So that, you know, it is quite easy for us to serve for the computers, you know, the, as a programmer, we have to tell computers what to do, so we have to so take care of computers, so that sometimes we fall into the mindset of you know, taking care of computers and they become servants of uh, computers. But remember, we are the masters, they are the servant. So I want, when the computers are getting smart, I want the, their smartness for us. So we don't want to be forced, we don't want to be changed, so they will change. Uh, Compared to the last 25, uh, 25 years ago, so the house programming become a uh, big, become easier so than 25 years ago. So if yes, if the programming is easier than 25 years ago, if yes, it's great. If not, we have to work on it. So uh, some of you could remember what programming was 25 years ago. Is it easier or it is harder? For me, uh, most of the cases, it, it is easier. Mostly because of Ruby, for me. <laughs> I created Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, it, but we didn't have web, so that, that the system architecture will be much, much simpler. Uh, if computers were smarter, how do you want to program? So in what kind of language? So I do want it in Ruby way, with less code, with less bugs. How can we be more scalable using Ruby? That's a problem. So we need faster execution because we have to process more data, more traffic. We want to uh, create less code, just because uh, more code, more bugs, more maintenance, uh, more debugging, more time, less productivity, uh, burden, uh, nightmare. <laughs> so we should be lazy to code. So we should write less code. And then we want to uh, cre uh, handle our projects with smaller team. So the fast execution, less code, smaller team is the key for the productivity. Uh, faster execution, for faster execution. Computers are getting faster, so we, uh, the computers improved thanks for the Intel and the other companies, but uh, not enough. Because, uh, you know, we are getting the limit of the, the performance improvement of the cores. Uh, so we cannot waste CPU time. Uh, 
the, that is the reason behind we set up the, the key phrase or project named Ruby 3x3. Uh, Ruby 3x3 means Ruby 3.0 will be three times faster than Ruby 2.0. Uh, it is easy to say, <laughs> but it's not very easy to uh, accomplish just because you know, we have more than 20 years of explain, exper uh, experience of improving the performance of the language. Back in the days, uh, we had the version Ruby 1.8. Uh, Ruby was pretty slow, yeah, because I implemented the virtual machine. <laughs> uh, I'm not a real, real performance guy. But uh, the guy named Koichi came in with his new virtual machine called named uh, YAV, Y-A-L, uh, Y-A-L-V-M, YAV. Uh, Y A R V. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, and then his virtual machine runs uh, far faster than the previous ones. So the uh, Ruby performance has been improved a lot back then in the, in the age of one nine. So since then, we have been working a lot to improve the performance of the virtual machine, but uh, it's not enough. So the Ruby 2.5, for example, runs as fast as, say, Python 3, and then in most of the cases, runs as fast as the, the PHP. But we are not enough. So that we are going to introduce the JIT technology, uh, just-in-time compiler technology, which is, uh, which is used by, say, JVM and the other, uh, other languages. So the, we, we created the prototype of the JIT compiler. So the, uh, this year, in probably Christmas Day, so Ruby 2.6 will be released uh, along with the JIT compiler prototype. The, that means we can JIT, so uh, compile, compile our Ruby programs into native code, uh, then uh, runs uh, our, that runs our Ruby programs in native code. But uh, we do not, we haven't implemented the lot, many op optimization yet, so that uh, even with the JIT compiler available, so Ruby 2.6 will not be three times faster. But uh, at least you can try it. So we we all have already released the, the release can I mean the pre-release uh, of the Ruby 2.6. So you can download it, compile it, and try uh, our JIT compiler prototype uh, with uh, with uh, the dash dash JIT option to the the, the to the program, Ruby interpreter. Uh, JIT is not a panacea. Uh, it improves the CPU, CPU intensive tasks, like a, you know, the hard number crunching tasks. But uh, if the bottleneck is not CPU, like network, database, it, it, will, it wouldn't work it. Don't expect too much. But uh, at least for the CPU intensive work, our prototype runs two, more than two times faster than uh, Ruby 2.0. That, that sounds like promising. So, and then we have a lot of rooms to improve the performance of JIT compiler. So the, uh, for CPU intensive tasks, so we have a very good chance to accomplish uh, the three times performance improvement or even more. So the computer's getting faster, but not enough, as I said, because of the physical limitation. So that uh, the circuits are shrinked so much, so that the line of the, uh, the width of the circuit is comparable to the size of the atoms. So this is, this is very, uh, you know, half task, and uh, we have the, some kind of thermal, thermal pro uh, problem because the circuit is so small, so the, we have the th thermal problem. If uh, the circuit 
uh, the child as expected. So that if the the you know the circuit chiller stopped, so that it would it would be burned out in a second. <laughs> so these days, uh, the the temperature, the heat generated by the the core is comparable to the the heat of the the frying pan. <laughs> And, then, and then in the future, it will be comparable to the, uh, to the, you know, the impulse, impulse field of the, the, you know, the satellite rocket, few, few thousand uh, degrees Celsius, per, <laughs> if pro properly chilled, if it isn't properly chilled. And then along with that, we are going to have the, some kind of quantum physics problem in the, in the core. So that is, that is not good. So the, the, we have less spaces for more powerful cores. So that we, the, the chip makers are trying to make it multi-core. So that back, back then, uh, in 25 years ago, when I started uh, Ruby, so there was only one computer, uh, one core per one computer. But these days, we have dual core, quad core, octa core, or maybe, I don't know how many, 64 cores in a, on a chip or something. So the, we have the multi-core on the computer. So the, the need for concurrency is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, and uh, the data distribution, uh, the, the computational distribution is getting uh, more, more and more important. The cloud is one of them. The function as a service is one of them. Uh, the, they are trying to treat the highly distributed tasks. So we require new computing abstraction. Uh, computers are getting faster, but not enough. So we have less space for more powerful cores, so that we might require some kind of heterogeneous computing, like a general purpose GPU or FPGA field programmable gate arrays. Uh, that kind of things we have to address to accomplish uh, less code and uh, more product, uh, become more productive. But uh, it's not by syntax. We are not going to change the Ruby syntax that much, in the, even in the future, uh, but by the abstraction. Uh, because there's very little room to change, uh, enhance the Ruby syntax. Uh, we are running out of the characters. <laughs> We use percent, we, we use, uh, you know, the column, uh, semicolon, we have a lot of characters, but we, we all, almost all of them are used, so that we are very real room to in, enhance the, the syntax, along with the, if uh, we change the syntax, so the, the existing Ruby program would be, bro would be bro broken, so that's not good, so that we are not going to change uh, the syntax of the language that much. So, the, but the, we need more abstraction. For example, Ruby on Rails uh, dramatically is the development, web development, but uh, by providing web abstraction, model view controller is the web abstraction. It, it's just a little bit different from the original MVC model, which is uh, invented by the small talk community, but uh, it is designed, it is tailored to the web uh, architecture, and uh, it works pretty well. And the active record model is the, the abstraction to hide the, you know, the database. It, I don't think they are perfect. I don't think they are perfect, but they worked okay. So the abstract view, it for, the Ruby on Rails provided an abstract view of web development. So that, that kind of ability to provide abstract view of something web development, uh, the data, data processing, thing. That, that kind of abstraction is the key for the productivity in the future. Uh, in concise expression, because we want, 
it is hard for us to understand uh, that very com long, complex code, so that we want to describe our, our task in very concise way. And uh, to enable that, so we need flexible programming language. And then the, the better, with the better abstraction, that leads to the better code and less code, less bugs, and uh, that leads to smaller teams. Uh, the Jeff Bezos, who uh, started uh, Amazon, ha uh, once, uh, once said uh, the two pizza rule. That means that if your team is bigger than, uh, does not fit in uh, two pizzas, does not fit with two pizzas, your team is too big. Uh, probably this is truth. This is, this is along with my, my experience. So that if your team is bigger, you, you need more communication, and the communication itself is the cost. So, so that you, if your technology make your team uh, filled with two pizzas. So that was wonderful. So I want to create that kind of technology. I want Ruby to be that kind of technology. So that, that enables faster development cycles that are in an agile way, that leads to the productivity. That is my dream. And uh, it is partially accomplished. But we have more way to go. So we want to have less bugs. So to accomplish that kind of uh, productivity, I want Ruby to be smarter companion. For example, better error detection. So remember, computers get, are getting smarter. We are uh, now in the days of, we, of the, uh, the beginning of the com smarter computers, even smarter than us. Uh, in, uh, in some aspect, like uh, the stronger chess player, stronger Go player, or maybe the better error detec detector of the development. So the, for example, static analysis. So the Rubicop is one of the way, one of the attempt to uh, help you. Uh, actually, I strongly agree with the attempt, uh, the challenge like Rubicop, but uh, uh, I'm not a big fan of the default Rubicop rules. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> and, uh, we recently had the Did You Mean uh, Gem, so that if we make uh, some kind of the, the type error, uh, the, the spell, spell error in our program, it, uh, the Ruby uh, will suggest you the right uh, spelling of the, uh, from the programs. Do, do, did you mean this or something? So the, or, <coughs> uh, we are trying to create some kind of profile type analysis so that uh, when you execute a test, we gather the type information out of this test execution so that uh, the next time you compile the Ruby program so that Ruby could suggest Okay, you call this uh, method with the, the argument string, but uh, you expect call this method with argument integer or something like that. So that we are trying to accomplish that kind of the, the, the runtime uh, type analysis or something. Or we are uh, working on a type inferences for better type checking. Or uh, someone in the community is working on the, the something named the language protocol server, which is, uh, which is uh, the defined by the Microsoft, so that by providing language protocol server, so that uh, many uh, IDEs and editors can provide, you know, the completion, error correction, or something like that in, in, in common. So that once you uh, implement a language protocol server, you could have the, uh, the, complete, the code completion in, say, Eclipse, uh, Visual, uh, VS Code, or, or some other, or even in the Vim or Emacs or something. So that leads to the, my dream of interactive programming. So the old days, we type into the editor, 
then uh, run the programs or compile the programs and get errors. But uh, the, these days, when we use the IDEs, we can get the, the code completion when we edit. So that uh, in the future, it will go far beyond that. So that we, when we type, so the uh, computer will suggest, okay, this way is better, or something like that. We can communicate with the, the computers or editors so, so that we can create better programs in, in correct way, more, more productive. That is uh, our, my, uh, um, that's my dream. And then I hope the Ruby will be part of that kind of the smarter programming environment. <coughs> So that, that is the far future. So the nearer future, we expect Ruby 3. So the Ruby 3 will be the next version. That will be three times faster than Ruby 2.0. And then we, uh, we have some kind of, the, the, you know, the improvement attempt of these, okay, the three, threefold. First one is MJ, the second one is Gil, the third one is Steep. Th these are code names. Uh, <coughs> MJ is a, a JIT compiler, I told you. And then uh, the JIT compiler will improve the, the performance of the Ruby uh, dramatically in, for CPU intensive tasks. And uh, Guild. Guild is also a, con a code name, which is the concurrent abstraction. So, <coughs> one thing I regret uh, in the design of Ruby was thread. <laughs> uh, thread is the, the entity of the concurrent. It's, it's kind of the c concurrent abstraction, but it, it is too primitive. It is too difficult to write correct threading code. Uh, so I should I should shouldn't have added. <laughs> so instead, we w should have added the better the concurrency abstraction. Uh, since Ruby is used by so many people, it is too late to remove the threads. But it's I think it's okay to add new construction and the discourage use of threads. That would, that would be the future of Ruby concurrency. So Guild, we, we may change the name for it, but uh, we call name it Guild. The Guild is one of our uh, experiment to provide better concurrent abstraction. So the Guild is uh, totally isolated from, the outs outs from outs outside. So we do not have, basically we do not have the shared state be uh, between guilds. That means that we don't have to worry about uh, you know, the, the state sharing. Uh, so that we, we don't have to care about the locks or the execution, uh, mutual exclusive execution or something like that. So that the guilds, between guilds, we communicate with some kind of that channel or queue or something like that. So uh, it's kind of like an actor model. So that we are experimenting on it. So the steep, is a uh, attempt to add, add some kind of the, the, the static type analysis to Ruby. Uh, it is quite difficult to to an, analyze the Ruby type information uh, statically, just because you know you Ruby is dynamically typed programming language, so you can do anything about types. So that every type uh, conflict, type error is detected in runtime. But uh, in some subset of uh, Ruby can be defined as a, a, a can, can be statically typed. So the, it would add the static type checks uh, like a it's it's kind of like a you know the JavaScript uh, I mean the TypeScript uh, the the user defined type type information so uh, the but uh, oh, this is not the one so 
But uh, we are not going to add some kind, any type annotation to the language, and then we are not going to the uh, lot of the type comments uh, all over the, the program to, to check types, but uh, we are trying to infer as much as possible, and then we are trying to gather information from the, say, the external uh, type de type defined files, or maybe from the, uh, the runtime uh, profile type analysis, or maybe the, uh, the ex we could extract the type uh, information from the URL doc uh, documentation or something like that. By using that, we can detect more errors in compile time. So that we are not going to implement 100% uh, the type safety. It is not possible for Ruby, but uh, we can detect, say, I don't know, maybe 20 to 40% of the error can be detected in compile time. It is far better than nothing. So that we are trying to do kind of that, that kind of the, the, the past gradual static types. So the, by Ruby 3, we are going to avoid a big gap. Uh, in the past, we made a big gap. For example, the, between the 1.8 and 1.9, we created the big gap. We introduced uh, many breaking changes. So the, the, our community was divided into two for, I don't know, more than five years. Uh, the people use, uh, some people keep you, kept using uh, old version 1.8, and uh, other people used the uh, newer version 1.9. And then those people use, using 1.8, the old version, was, you know, kept away from the newer technology. We have improved uh, the language, we have improved the uh, performance, but uh, these people who, st who had sticked with uh, the old version was uh, left away from our improvement. Uh, similar things happened in the other programming language as well. The, uh, we had uh, some kind. Of, we saw some kind of the, the community division between Python 2 and Python 3, or maybe uh, some division between the uh, PHP 5 and the PHP 7, or PHP community even cancelled PHP 6. So that kind of the, the big gap problem occurs in many open source software, you know, many language communities. So, but uh, that's kind of tragedy. So we made mistakes. We made a mistake of the big gap in back in one nine. So that we are not going to make that things again. So that we are going to avoid a big gap. So that we will do the continuous evolution. For example, we are going to add the JIT compiler to 2.6, not, not waiting to 3.0, because we are going to have the continuous evolution. We are going to add some kind of concurrent abstract in the future, of, it will be to, I don't know, to 7, to, to 8, but uh, uh, it, will be, it would not be a breaking change. So the, you know, technology comes and goes, and then you may feel, uh, hmm? Oh no, uh, the Ruby 3 will be some kind of label of the accomplishment. So that we accomplish these kind of the goals, like uh, making it faster, making it concurrent, making it more productive. So that we, level, we will level it, Ruby 3. So that, but that every Ruby 2 programs would run in Ruby 3. So, and then uh, technology comes and goes, you may feel Ruby has become old. Uh, so last, this morning, uh, the Koichi show, showed me the, some kind of the, you know, the, the Stack Overflow queries, the, uh, leveling the, the, okay, Rust is the most loved programming language, and uh, Ruby is not in the list. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, but, uh, 
I believe with continuous evolution, so that Ruby will become the hot again in the future. Be uh, you know, the people love new technologies. Yeah, I agree that. So the 10 years ago, Ruby was pretty hot, new hot new technology with Rails. But uh, these days, it's we they consider so the Ruby is no longer hot. It is stable. So I think we cross the gap of the you know the. Uh, like, like, like a learning curve or something. <laughs> the, but uh, at the same moment, so if we don't, if we seek st st stability, like all programming languages, like a full and cobol, so that, you know, the technology, the Ruby, will gradually disappear. So these days, very few people use cobol. Very few people use Fortran, no longer. And uh, I don't want Ruby will be like that. So that I want Ruby, okay, Ruby is the good language. The Ruby is the good language to help you become productive and uh, enjoy programming. So I want to be Ruby like that forever, if possible. So that means we have to evo evolve continuously, forever. So we cannot stop. We cannot stop. So by with continuous evolution, we will become hot again in the future. Our goal is we can accomplish great things with simple Ruby code, uh, simpler, safer, more enjoyable. Uh, humans don't change much in 25 years biologically. Uh, we are not smarter than 25 years ago. Uh, yeah, 25 years ago, I was young, and I must, I must be much, much smarter. <laughs> uh, programming has been improved uh, by evolution of tools, uh, by conquering some kind of the mind barriers. Uh, only paranoid survives. So. Only it's 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 the very uh, imp important uh, phrase from Intel, and uh, I believe that. So I want to be. I will try to be paranoid <laughs> to survive. So we will do everything to survive, improve the performance, the providing new abstraction, uh, providing new tools. Uh, they improve the language, improve the implement, uh, error detection, whatever. I would, we will do everything to survive and to, to keep hot. Uh, to keep providing values to you and you provide values to your clients. Uh, to make programming fun again. Uh, the program is, I believe programming itself is so much fun. I enjoy programming. I started programming is more than, I don't know, I don't know 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I programmed for the last 40 years, uh, most, most uh, but uh, it has been fun. It has always been fun. I have never tired of programming. But uh, sometimes uh, the programming requires some, uh, you know, boring bookkeeping or something like that. We want to reduce that kind of things. We want to reduce that kind of the tired, boring stuff. And then I, we want to focus on the fun aspect of programming. So the, I want Ruby to be a tool that help you to concentrate on the fun, enjoyable aspect of programming. So I will do everything. We will do everything to make Ruby like that, to improve Ruby like that. Uh, so the please join us to make Ruby like that. Use Ruby in your project. Uh, improve Ruby or gems or your library, your tool, or tell your friends Ruby is great. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, any kind of uh, activity would be contribution uh, to the open source community, broader open source community and Ruby community. Enjoy programming and use Ruby. Be happy, happy hacking. Thank you. <laughs>